Hello, hello, this is Alice, and I am so excited that you are joining me for our session today. We are going to be um, looking at some really fun stuff. If you don't know me, I run the membership group at scraphappy.org, and I love to share different scrapbooking and other fun creative ideas. Let's just bring everything up here, hopefully. Um, the window, the comments and reaction window. There we go. I need that. Wynelle is here and she says, good afternoon. Orchard Girl says, hi, Alice. Hi, everyone. Sharon says, hello. Awesome. Well, we are ready to start. Today, we're going to play with something that's really fun. I think that um, in scrapbooking, interactive uh, pages, pages that do fun things are some of my very favorite ones to do. Uh, the buffering is bad. <laughs> I think that's what you're trying to say. Uh, uh, but we, hopefully this will improve. Okay. So what we have here is a folio kit from photo play. So this is the photo play folio two kit. So you can see like it's folio two, each folio that they release has slightly different features and different interactions. So hopefully this, um, will be something kind of cool. Have you seen these products before? That's what I would love to know is have you actually seen these folio products from photo play before? I think they're really cool. Um, they have lots of interactive elements. So if you look here on the cover, you can see that it becomes a little folder or a folio that folds out and has different features. So I think that what we can do here is put this together today. I've done like the smallest, smallest amount of prep. Hello, Debbie. Um, I've done the smallest, smallest amount of prep to get ready for this. I kind of wanted you to see like the whole project kind of coming together and how easy they are to work with. There are times when the instructions seem a little bit like, uh oh, what do you do? Like um, where you might feel like you get a little bit stuck and they have a great resource. They actually make a video on their YouTube channel that shows you exactly how to put the whole folio together. So not only do you have a written instructions, but you have a video that you can easily access to kind of walk you step by step through the whole process. Well, today we're going to do a little bit of that. Sharon says she hasn't seen them. Um, yeah. And I think that a lot of people haven't seen them. They're really cool. And it's only just one little piece of their little creative section that they have. Like when we think of photo play, a lot of us are just thinking of their fun papers. Maybe you're thinking of their gnome papers, but I just wanted you to know about these because they're a really cool addition to their line of scrapbooking and creative um, kits that they offer. Yeah, I hadn't seen them. Debbie says they have them at her local scrapbook store. So today that is what we will do is go through this. They are fairly easy. Like the video that they have that shows like literally every step along the way is a 33, 35 minutes, 35 minutes long. And um, I think um, as I go, I would like to add some of my own papers to it. Um, I'll use this as my base, use the product as my base, but I'd like to decorate the pages a little as I go, because once you get some of the layers put together, then you've lost the opportunity to decorate them. That's going to slow us down a little bit today, but I think it'll be totally worth it. So that's what we'll do. Lynn says, yes, I have some that I have not used yet. Yay. Cat says, I've seen them and I have been curious slash intimidated. Well, let's fix this. Um, and hopefully we'll just chat about scrapbooking and fun stuff as we go so that it's not like, uh oh, <laughs> like just watch somebody put together a kit. Uh, Donna says, I just went into a commercial. <laughs> um, I don't know. No, um, I'm not selling them. I'm not selling them. 
uh, you can go if you want to use my here. Here we go. So if you would like to buy these, you can go to scrapbook.com and buy them using my link. Isn't that nice? Link, 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 link. So bit.ly slash scrappy shop is my affiliate link for scrapbook.com. But that's not my point. My point is just that there's a cool product out there. And I think that as we put this together, we can talk about different ways that we can include some of the ideas from these kits in our own scrapbooking. So with no further ado, let's bring this up. Why is it so shady? This is like so weird that it's so dark because I have so many lights and daylight in here. Okay, let's go. And I'm going to just slide here a little bit. Okay. So when you get the kit, it has all the papers in it. They're scored for you. So A, right there, <laughs> they're cut to the right size and they're scored for you, which makes that amazing alone. But you do have to put the together, put it together. So this kit makes a six by eight interactive little album with flips, folds, pockets, and a waterfall. And Literally, when by the time you're done, you have all the pieces, so then you can decorate it. As I mentioned, we're going to do a little decorating along the way, because I think that's going to be better. Now, there are written instructions. Let's take a look at the written instructions. Here is some of the written instructions. Here is some of the written instructions. And here is some of the written instructions. So, it looks like a lot. It is. There's a lot of steps, but sometimes it's like, Crease this, score this. <laughs> um, and what, um, crease this and score this, right? So it's not a, um, a big deal as to what it's going to look like. Um, keeps filtering. Oh, <laughs> so, so this is, um, our chance to, to go through. The instructions are very thorough and some of them are simple. It's like, find this piece, we'll set it down like this. So let's go through together. Step number one is to locate the folio base. So this one's pretty easy because it is pre-scored with the lines that you need. Of course, you're going to go through and take your bone folder and score the line, score them better. Right? You're just going to score them a little bit better as you go. Now you'll notice in this one it says unfold it to lay it flat, orient it correctly on your work surface. Spine number one should be one and a half inches wide. So one of the tools you're definitely going to want to have when you're building this is a ruler. It doesn't have to be this ruler. <laughs> it has to just be a ruler. And you'll notice that this one here, this spine section, is wider than this one. So they've oriented you and everything. Like they, they do make it easy. Um, one thing that I'm going to suggest is that you can either go through and identify all your pieces and write on them, which is what I did. I labeled them according to the insides of the kit, or you can take a sticky note and put a sticky note on them. One of the cool things they have about these folios is that they're also available with a black base instead of a white base. So if you'd prefer that look rather than the white, you can totally choose to get, to get those ones. So yeah, internet, I'm sorry guys, it's internet and it, um, it probably is on my end. We've been doing lots to try to get better internet here, but if it's a problem, it's a problem. And, um, we've paid for good internet. Let me tell you that. So the first step here into, well, first step is find this and fold it, right? Like that's how easy some of these steps are. Find it and fold it. Step number two, locate the A1. It is a pre-scored five and a half by seven and a half piece. And then you're gonna fold it along the half inch score line. So this is gonna be your first pocket page. And so make sure, my only advice, like with this kind of stuff, is make sure that you have the right piece by making sure that you do measure. There's a couple pieces that are similar in size or really close in size, but they're not quite the same thing. Usually you can figure it out just by looking at them, but you know, measure it and make sure, right? Like you don't want to have to be like pulling this apart or, you know, worst case scenario, cut a new piece. 
Another option is you build yours a little bit different, but if you kind of want to do it, like just take the time to measure it. So step number three, so I've found my A1 piece and then you're going to find your A2 piece, which is five by eight and a half. And you're going to cut away the corners. So I haven't done that. I've scored, but I haven't like done any of the assembly. So cut away the corners and it just wants you to cut on an angle to cut the corners off. You're going to take this and you're going to turn them into pockets. If you don't cut it perfectly even, it's not going to matter because you're not going to see it. It's going to be hidden inside the pocket. Okay, so that's your piece. Now, we've already done one, two, three steps. That's it. Uh, step four is to apply adhesive to all of the flaps on here and to fold them under and then we're going to adhere them to the A1 piece. So I'm going to just show you here. Here, once we fold these flaps under, you can see how that's going to make a nice little pocket here. It's going to be a little side pocket that sits on this flap. And then this flap is going to go into the book. But first we're going to make the flap so it's a little bit easier to work with. So that's exactly what's happening here. So that's just the step that we'll do. Now, would I like this piece to be covered with paper? Do I want this ton to be covered? I think what I would like is for this piece to be covered so that you can see the pretty paper peeking out here. Now, the only thing is I'll cover the whole piece because I would want all of that poking out. If I leave it white, it's probably going to be fine. Let me show you what I picked. I didn't even pick photo play paper. I'm not just married to one company, right? I like them all. This is simple stories paper that I bought a lot of because I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. And it's kind of like a farm stuff. I'm planning to put my chicken stuff into here. Vicky says, I don't know if it's my internet or yours. I know. So I bought a lot of this. It's called apron, apron strings. And so this would be a good way for me to use a lot of different um, kinds of paper and put it in here. So do I need to worry about that little strip along there? Probably not. Let's just put it together. Let's just put it together. I think for a little white strip like that, that's not going to make a big difference, right? Is it? Not really. I'm not going to be able to see. Actually, I know. I do want to cover it. I want to cover it. So let's do it. Let's just do what I want to do. Let's cover it with a little bit of this. Now, I could just do a little strip along here, but then when I use the pocket, what's going to happen is as I slide things into this pocket, they're going to get stuck when I try to pull them back out. So in order to make it not get stuck, I'm going to actually cover that whole pocket. Now the section here is five by seven and a half. So I'm just going to cut that piece right now. That is five by seven and a half. And I'm just going to cover it because that's what I really wanted to do is cover the paper. And I think that when we see them put their stuff together, we're like, oh, that's beautiful. But you know, it's a lot easier when you have the pieces covered as you go. Okay. Okay, Sharon says, it looks good now. Thank goodness. Okay, thank you for letting me know because I was worrying about it. Uh, Vicki, check the cog on the bottom of your screen. YouTube decided to change a setting. Oh, it might have done that, especially if my internet was kind of lacking at first, it might have said, oh, you don't need super high quality downloads on this. <laughs> so, just going to throw some tape on here. Stick this down. Why am I using paper tape when that's just a little bit harder to work with? I'm using paper tape because it's a little bit stronger than any kind of roll adhesive. And when you're doing these kind of things, you don't want your little flaps and stuff to come off. You want everything to really stick down. So this is a good time to actually make the effort to use one of these other kinds of little more, more permanent tapes, right? 
So I'm just going to cover this little section right here. And that is super cute. You're not going to see a lot of it. It's going to be hiding behind this pocket, but there's no way that I could cover that after and make it really work well for the pocket. So let's go for it. Anything that I can cover after, I'm going to default to that because I think putting it together is cooler than decorating at this step, right? So let's get this put together. So y'all might know, y'all, I love that word. <laughs> if I was from the South, I would use that every single day. Um, y'all might know that um, I became a crazy chicken lady last year. So one of the things that I tend to have a lot of pictures of right now is chicken pictures. We just hatched some baby chicks that are super cute and adorable. And I can't wait to um, do some more stuff like with my baby chicken scrapbooking. So I think I'm going to turn this into a little chicken album and that would be adorable. And I have to say shout out to Dietra for giving me that idea. She's like, Alice, you know, you have to cover it in like farm papers and put chickens in it, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I think you're right. But really, any kind of theme that you do with this will totally work. Okay, so now I have my pocket. You can see that it's covered on the inside of the pocket. I think that just looks extra pretty. You know, it's another step, yes, in the building of it, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so step five just tells you where to stick the flap. Now they're really specific, which I thought was really great with their instructions. Apply adhesive to the back of this flap of the assembled A pocket. Adhere the flap to the inside of the front cover, just to the left of the first score line. So it's gonna go right here, just to the left of this first score line. So let's do that right now. Now I can put this down and then afterwards when I'm covering it up, I'm going to be able to cover this seam. So I think that may will make it look even prettier as I go. I'm just going to score this a little bit more and fold it a little bit more so that it's going to sit a little bit nicer when I put it in here. Okay. <laughs> Teacher says, I love all the chickens from afar. Oh my goodness. Well, Joe, my tech guy slash son <laughs> has helped me set up a video camera on my chickens, on my baby chickens the other day. He made me do some of the work. So, it, but then he did the tech part. He, uh, he twisted his knee and got hurt, but I was able to go get the camera, install the camera, and then he did the tech stuff so that we could actually make it work. <laughs> okay, so this is the first part done. So this is all the way to step number five. So you can see what I say, like it looks intimidating because there's a lot of directions. They're just giving you every single step. But I have this pocket, that's done. So step number six, they're calling the next section B because it's like a different page. So this was your A page. Now we're gonna go on to the B page. So I'm gonna just set the little folio aside and then I'm going to take out the first page, which is the B1. It is five and a half by seven and a half piece, which you'll notice was exactly the same as the A1 paper. So it's the same size. It's just, you know, this is for a new part that goes into that book. So this is your second pocket page. I've scored it. Step number seven is to take at this B2, which is two and a half by six inch. It's scored along three sides like this because it's going to make um, a little flap that's going to be open on. So it's gonna make a little pocket at the bottom of the page, right? So then we can put things into it from here. So we've got the same kind of situation. Once we put this pocket on here, I'm not gonna be able to cover this page very easily. So I'm going to cover this page right now with some pretty paper. 
Now I already cut this and I used the black side. I think this time I'm going to use the little apron side with the pink. And it was seven and a half. So seven and a half by five. Correct. Let me double check. It's easier to check. Measure twice cuts once, right? That's the rule. <laughs> okay. You may notice that I go slightly underneath the sizes because I'd rather be a little under than over on some of this, right? So I'm going to cover up this one. Now, do I want to cover the whole thing or do I want to leave some little white lines? I think I'd rather leave a little bit of white space on it. So I'm actually going to take and trim a quarter of an inch off of it. And that way in the places where it's hard to cover and I don't, it's going to look a little bit more natural. Super pretty. So with this so far, we have made a super simple pocket. Like this little pocket that we made right here, that is so easy to put onto a scrap of page. And I love having little pockets, especially if you're tucking a tag if you're um, trying to hide some journaling on a page, I can't tell you how many times I make something that is kind of like this, like that little accordion piece. Not a, it's not so much accordion. It was like literally three slides that get folded under. And then if you use that as your photo mat, then everything behind your photo can makes a nice pocket for you to put your, um, put your journaling into. So that's a really great, tip for for that behind a photo little pocket for journaling okay let's stick this down and get this onto this b1 paper so that we can move on with the next step it's gonna be so cute to make this oh my gosh <laughs> diane says hello everyone vicky says hi diane I'm so glad you could join us today. I am using a Folio 2 kit from PhotoPlay. I have the white version. It also comes in black and they're not very expensive. If somebody wants to look and see the price on it, like you can just let us know. They're, they're not very expensive. They're actually quite um, reasonably priced. And I think that, you know, it just makes it's so fun to put together a little project. These are such nice things for gifts or if you had like a whole bunch of pictures from a birthday or some other kind of celebration, it would be nice to put together a little book like this so that you can um, celebrate that, that special event. Okay, so for this B2, we're gonna cut those same angled corners, miter the corners so that we can make that pocket. You'll see, I'm just cutting them off with my scissors. They don't have to be too perfect. Everything here is getting tucked underneath. And you'll notice like when I wrote on them, I wrote on them with pencil, but I'm really not worried because pretty much all of that's gonna get covered up or it's a pencil and erase it, right? It's not a big deal. Okay, so I have to put my adhesive on these three little sides here and stick this little pocket down. So let's do that right now. And then we'll be done this little section, right? It's so much easier than it looks like it is. Now little pockets like this are also super easy to add to a card. Like, you know, if you make a little pocket like this, put that onto a card, you can make a little card for a gift card. You can make a little pocket um, that has, you know, a little present. If you have a little present, maybe you're given a little bit of cash and tucking that in there, but a little pocket can be a fun thing to stick onto a card too. So that's just another idea for um, when you're creating and I don't know why. So Phyllis says I paid $14.99. Yeah, like they're not, they're not expensive. They have all the cutting, all the scoring kind of done for you. To me, that's a, <laughs> that's a good deal. 
I bought this one myself too. I'm, I must have bought it online because it didn't have a price tag on it. And when I buy stuff from the stores, they always have the price tag right on them. So you'll see that I'm not overly, overly panicked when I'm sticking the, these on here. If you want to be like extra careful when you're lining things up, you can take a little bit of like low tack tape and line up the side and make all of your, um, all of your corners and your, your meats like super perfect. I've got them pretty good with just by lining it up. Part of that is when it's tricky when it's folded under start, I like to start in one corner and then kind of line up the other corner and then kind of push it all down. Okay. So we've got this B2 and now it needs to be attached. Now the B2, let's go back to this. So we had this spine that had these two spine folds, right? Because it's going to fold up and be like a cool little project like this. And we've got these two spine folds. Well, this one is going to go just to the inside of this spine fold, right? And then just as like a preview of what's to come, if we skipped ahead to 12, we've got these little five little water card waterfall pieces. They're going to go right in the center. So if you're like wondering, eh, how is this all going to fit together? You can always find something like the waterfalls and be like, okay, those fit there. It definitely has to be to this side of the fold or whatever, just in case, you know, you come to a part where you're like, hmm, not 100% sure what goes here. But like I said, their video is great. <laughs> so question when you're doing your scrapbook pages, do you ever get to the end of your scrapbook page and think, ah, where does my journaling go? <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, that's happened to me. <laughs> All right, so let's put this on here. Put my head in the screen probably. Put this here and stick that down. And I've got that attached in there. So now I've got this pocket and I've got that second page. We've got this blank piece here. Okay. So next up, we're going to take, so that's already just step 10. That's 10 steps. There's 27 steps, but you know, we've already done 10 in the first few minutes, right? It hasn't been too bad. Okay. So this next step, it wants us to take this closure piece. It's just a little piece that is, um, three by six. You're going to cut it in half. It has one score on it and you're just going to cut it in half so that you have two pieces that are one and a half by six. Now these are going to be closure pieces for the waterfall. So it says you can set them aside until step 15. Um, my concern is that this is going to go here in step 15. And because I'd like to cover the inside of this before I attach my waterfall, I'm actually going to put this piece on first so that this little tab is hidden. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. And I think that because I watched the instructions, I was like, Hey, this is what I would do because I want to have that covered. So, Let's just attach that right now. And that looks about centered. So that's going to go there. And then I'm going to cut a piece that covers this background right here. That's going to sit behind these little waterfall pieces so that it's covered. And you can see that when it's like, when we lift that up. So I'm going to take another piece of my pretty pattern paper. Um, ooh, that's pretty. There's a lot of pretty ones here. Let's see. I'm going to take this one, maybe the yellow, and cut that one. 
<laughs> You're a rebel. I know, I know. I'm like breaking the rules, checking it out, doing my own thing. It's all good. So it says that it's five and a half. So I'm going to go five and a quarter. And it's seven and a half by seven and a quarter. So five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I'm just going to cut the whole five and a quarter strip like this right now. And then cut the seven and a quarter strip. Um, oh, seven and a quarter is the worst measurement on this one because it literally doesn't exist on here. It's more of a guess. Every uh, trimmer has its one measurement that's really terrible. That's the one on this one. And then I'm just going to cover it like this to kind of cover that back. And then we'll add my waterfall. It's going to be so cute. So the waterfall is basically just a stack of photos. You could add journaling. You don't have to be doing photos, but it just gives you a stack of them that flips. So you can flip from one to the next. And that is um, a really fun technique. If you're not fond of hiding things like that behind a page protector, then I would highly encourage you to check out the flip flaps from Close to My Heart because they adhere to the outside of your page protector and they allow you to build a waterfall on the outside so that you can look at that super easily as you go through your pages. If you're wondering what that is, then we have done, um, let's see, I did a big display of layouts. Was that Friday last week? I think Friday for the Happy at Home series, we looked at a whole bunch of um, crazy, interactive, like fun ideas. Um, that day I showed a lot of layouts and we definitely saw those then. So here's my next question. Have you done waterfalls and what do you like or not like about doing a waterfall on your page? Because, um, there, there's there's pros and cons for sure of doing them. Okay, so now we're going back to the instructions to follow the rules. <laughs> okay, so I've got my closure already added. Step number 12 is to take these pieces and score them. I've done that. Like I said, I pre-scored the, the scores. Next, we're going to, with the flap at the top fold back each flap so it's facing away from you so you can see how they're very specific fold the flap so it's facing away from you adhere the first flap to the center panel of the folio um, three quarters of an inch down from the top and centered from left to right so they want us to measure three quarters down and I'm just gonna take my pencil and draw a little mark right here so now I know where my first flap is going to go. Once you get the first one, try to make it straight, and then the rest will be super easy to add. So Vicki says that's what I was taught to do with when I made books with waterfalls. And April says I've done them with flip flaps and I like them. I like them for like yeah, the flip flaps with a with the with the to make a waterfall are great. So I'm gonna attach this first one and then we'll work on adding the rest. So you can see, I still get that little bit of that yellow paper at the top, isn't that pretty? And because I've cut my paper to exactly the same size as the width of this, that's actually really cute. Um, okay, let's oh, peel that off. Sometimes that stuff peels off so well, and other times, no. Okay, let's put this and line this up nice and straight. Get my my head in the way. I'm just gonna cover up my pencil mark. But that looks pretty straight to it. Does it? Does it look straight, Alice? No. I'll tell you what, I'll line it up with my paper and then it's gonna be super straight. <laughs> Smart. Okay. Um so Debbie says, I've done a waterfall. The part I don't like is having portrait and landscape photos and trying to get them to fit. <laughs> Absolutely. So trick. When I did my pocket pages, I discovered that with pocket pages, I liked to choose a design 
that had horizontal four by sixes and vertical four by sixes. And I put those two pages side by side so that I had options for doing um, the horizontal kind of waterfalls and the vertical waterfalls all kind of on that same layout. That was my, that was my favorite trick for that. I'm going to just fold that around to the back because it's kind of in the way. And then I'm going to add the rest of these. Now for the rest of them, you just line them up with the next one. So yes, I'm not going to see all of this yellow paper, but I'd rather just put it in there in the background and get that in where I want it to be right now. So I'm not too worried. Uh, Daniela says when I want to mix portrait and landscape, I do square flaps. There you go. So there are ways. Vicki says, I like that I can put in more pictures. Sometimes we have more pictures and putting in more is more, right? More is more sometimes. <laughs> I get that. Okay, so we got five of these little waterfalls to put in here. Uh, these are different than the... Um, waterfalls that I showed on a project the other day with the big fish. I don't know if you remember that layout, but it had a waterfall, but they were all connected on one piece of paper. And that makes a very different waterfall because with that one, you can kind of, um, grab the one paper and then control the whole waterfall at one time with these, you have to like flip, flip, flip. But with the other one that I had, it works a little differently. So Daniela, yeah, I, April says, I print two verticals on a photo the size of a landscape or vice versa. Yep. That's, um, that's the, I think the easiest way, April, putting the two, cause you can fit like the two verticals into a horizontal or two horizontals into the vertical. So you end up with some that are half size. And let's pop this, line this edge up. Perfect. And one left to go. So this makes it really fun to, uh, you know, just get some more pictures in there because you have fronts and backs. Like, so these five little flaps also allow us to uh, put like another 10 photos in there, right? So Debbie says, I bet you guys print at home too. <laughs> yes, Debbie, I do. If you are not printing at home though, um, then you can still order like some um, that are sideways. I have seen people that say, okay, I design my pages around horizontal photos. So anytime I have vertical, I always print them three by four. So that is one way to kind of deal with that. But sometimes your three by four photo, like that's vert, like sometimes your vertical photo is the best one. So you want to make that one bigger. So that obviously doesn't work with that. But, you know, there, there are ways you can, you know, set yourselves up little rules. <laughs> April says, I do print at home and I'm impatient and I like a variety of sizes. Okay, so with this little waterfall here, we have gone through step 12, 13, 14, 15, where I've already added this closure that will kind of hold this down. Now, it does obviously doesn't hold it down right now. You can use like a um, magnet to help hold them down. You can use like, um, like Velcro, kind of a little loop thing to hold it down. There's lots of different things you can do. You can just skip it completely and not bother holding it down. Uh, there's a lot of different ways, but for now, I'm just including all of their steps. If I decide I don't like it, I'll just take that thing off of there and be like, done. <laughs> okay, so that takes us to step 15. That's all of the steps in the first part of these instructions. Step 16 takes us to a new pocket page. So we're going to set this aside and I need C1 and C1 is, and so you'll notice that they've oriented this different on the instructions. So 
on the other ones when we were doing like a one you see how they've got the score line along the left when they're showing us c1 they're showing us the score line along the right hand side so that is what i did i've got my paper and i've scored it and i've got it along that side because it's going to go into the book differently right so i've got it scored and then it wants us to find C2. Now this is about the only one that for a second I had to really think about. It wants a six by six and a half piece. This one is scored along three sides. There was a piece in this kit. Uh, this is a photo play, a folio two kit. Their folio kits are fantastic, April. So this is the only one. There is another piece that is six by six, not six by six and a half. But this one is scored along four sides so and i didn't have that many pieces left so it wasn't that confusing just you know pointing it out so they have here they want you to um, score those edges and cut those little pieces off because we're going to be making another pocket so i'm going to cut those little corners off so we can make our mitered corners to make our pocket And because this is going to go onto here, that's going to give me the same case where I've got to cover this paper here first. I'm going to take some more of this paper. Do I want to try to do? No, it's okay. I think that's, that's going to be good. So I'm going to take some of this paper and I'm going to cut it. And we've got five by seven and a half so i'll take just a little quarter inch off of each of those so seven and a quarter by four and three quarters and i'm going to stick this down onto my c1 just so that when i have this pocket on here you'll be able to see that that um, pretty paper sticking out the top there. <laughs> so April says, thanks Alice, I have just discovered photo plate stamps and I love them. So one of the things that they came out with is their Say It With Stamps collections. And I was introduced to this at their booth at Creativation in January of last year, when we still got to do real things. And, um, they had just released their new Say It With Stamps collection. Now they are really cool and I actually have one of the sets close by so I think that it would be fine to tell you, but we're on video so it'd be cooler to show you <laughs> why I think they're cool. So I'm just gonna take this and press this down and I have one sitting right here. Uh... Fix that. I have two of them sitting right here. So I have two of their stamp sets. So this is how they come. You'll notice that um, I paid a fair bit of money for them in Canada, 20 bucks, but they have your one big word that comes with your set. And then they have all of these little phrases that go with it. So my word here is wish and they've got close your eyes and make a, and then they have you were here so wish you were here dreams are a blank your heart makes so wish your heart makes M may your um wish um there's a big birthday sealed with a wish upon a star they just have a lot of really fun phrases they've got blow out the candles and then it has make a wish right so there's a lot of options for the way you can put that together here's another one that i have with the word happy and of course it has things like you make me all kinds of happy it has the word birthday it has thoughts it has halloween so they're really thinking they've got thanksgiving easter pretty much every little phrase that you can put together with happy it has them they also have matching die sets that you can get for them this one has 
the inside and the outside so you can kind of cut a mat for the little word too. So they have a lot of options with that. So I think those are really nice. They do have other sets and stuff too with icons and stuff. But when uh, April mentioned stamps, I'm like, check these out. Like they're called their Say It With Stamps. And uh, I thought it was a really fun concept with how um, how many different words they've gone into with them and some of the fun phrases and sayings to just to give you that versatility. And they do a lot of them, like the, the words themselves, like the big word, they use a few different fonts for those, but the little tiny things tend to be the same ones. So you can kind of still mix and match your sets. You can see like, I could easily mix and match these two sets to use those together. Okay, so we've got to this. I'm gonna cover up this section right here with my pattern paper. Is it bad that I have cooking instruments when I'm doing thing about my chickens? Maybe. <laughs> like, one of the things I also enjoy about chickens is <laughs> chicken dinner. <laughs> but anyways, I think this is just pretty paper, so I'm gonna go with it. We're not gonna see too much of it, right? We'll just see a little bit. It's all good. All good. Okay, so let's now adhere this pocket to this page. So I have made folios like this in other classes. I've done um, I've done them with Teresa Collins. So I think that she may have some different products. Although I don't remember if we used a product like this or if we had actually cut all of the pieces and scored them. <laughs> like there's a definite benefit to this. Uh, April says eggs are used in cooking too. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out, April. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thing is that, yes, I have chickens and yes, I love my little chickens, but they're also earning their keep around here. <laughs> and uh, they are good at, they're good at uh, earning their keep, so. I'm happy with my chickens. Okay, so now I've got this pocket on here. That's very cute. And that's my little open edge pocket, right? I can slide my things into there. And then this is going to go into here. And they said, apply that adhesive to the flap on the right side of the assembled pocket. Turn the pocket over and adhere it to spine two just to the right of the first score. So they're actually getting you to put it on the front and apply it like this. Is what I think, just to the right of the first score. Or, yeah, because that's how they're folding it over. Okay, so. Um, I will say one thing about this pa tape, paper tape from scrapbook.com. It really comes off of the main part of the roll a lot. And I'm not super thrilled about that. Uh, I find it very annoying, actually. I don't know that my other ones... Are you planning on eating the chickens? I will say we have eaten some of the chickens. When we hatch our chickens, we end up having, you know, like males and females, and you can't keep that many males. So there are only a few options when you have that many male chickens. And one of your options is eating them. <laughs> um, we have done some butchering. It's not my go-to. We've sold some of the males, but you know, then it's just somebody else butchering them. Um, yeah, so that's a real part of raising chickens and having baby chickens. <laughs> that's part of it. I know. It sounds terrible, but it's also part of life. So, you know, unless I became vegetarian or something like that, I'd, yeah, I'd have to reconsider. Okay, so that is this pocket. This one is done. That takes us all the way to step number 19. We're getting close to the finish line here. 
So the next part here, it's the lay the envelope pocket flat. So this is the envelope pocket. And this is what it looks like all stretched out. And then of course you have to kind of, there's double lines here, double fold lines, and you want to go through with your bone folder and crease all of those lines, crease the little lines on the sides. And one of the things you're going to do next is you're going to, um, you're going to fold these like an accordion so that when you put this together, you will have an accordion folded pocket, right? An accordion folded pocket. And then we're going to have adhesive here to stick to this side and that side. But before we fold this up, let's have a look and see what we can't fix um, what we what we won't be able to add pretty paper to after. And that to me is this little inside section right here. So I want to add a little bit of pretty paper there. And this is five and a half. So by seven and a half. So I'll do five and a quarter by seven and a quarter with one of my pretty Ooh, I haven't used that paper. Let's use some of that. Five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Um, we'll cut that off really quick and get that filled in there. So there's actually chickens on this paper, guys. There's chickens and cows and pigs and vegetables. Okay, so once this folds over, I'm not going to be able to get into here, and I'd like to have a little bit of this peeking out here. Maybe the red would be better. The red be better. It's kind of prettier, right? I can use the red on another piece. I'm going to put this one in here just to get some of that pretty pattern in there. They made all these fun patterns, and this is a really great way to use more of them. Vicky says she had laying hens. <laughs> Vicky says, I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Um, I grew up in the country. Um, I wouldn't say we were farmers, but we definitely had animals. And yeah, so let's, uh, and they weren't all just pets. Sometimes your, your pets are um, dual purpose, let's just say, like my chickens. Uh, let's put this down. Don't have anything really strong that has to be held on here. That should be fine. Uh, yeah, laying hens are great. So right now we have 15 laying hens and we have two roosters and we get about usually eight to ten eggs a day and from from the 15 hens now some chickens are better layers than other certain different uh, varieties of chickens are better at laying we kind of have a um, barnyard mix some of them are crossed with other crosses and some of them are um, some of them are more pure um, purebred chickens just depends on which chicken um, some we get from the hatchery and then you get a certain kind of chicken and other ones have been mixed together out in the barnyard <laughs> just having nature do what nature does and so um, I love the chickens part of what I really like is getting to hang out with my chickens a little bit get to know them a little bit they have personalities they like different things I lost the end on this tape. There we go. And um, yeah, they kind of definitely are interesting to hang around. And the laying hens, they're, they're contributing. <laughs> that would make a nice travel mini book to put your memorabilia in, says April. Yes, yes, it would. So yeah. Uh, travel books, uh, birthday kind of presents. Um, there's a lot of fun ways to use 
a folio project like this. I think of things where you have, um, like travel is a really good example and you know, then you can customize it with any travel papers. Like, oh my gosh, you have a gazillion good options with that. Okay. So here we go. We've got the folio. I've got that paper tucked in there so that we have this nice pocket area to fill up. And then the next step is to take this pocket and to stick it to the back. Stick it to the back, right? So they're like, put adhesive all over the back and put it in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Step 22 said, fold down the top of the envelope to close the pocket. <laughs> like, yep, okay, I understood. <laughs> um, and then if you look on um, the photo play site, they have different um, examples of how they've been put together. And you can see some of the fun things that have been done to, uh, to decorate them or to finish them. And, you know, somebody took a, um, a little kind of button and they put the little button on here and like looped it. So you have little buttons that you tie the twine between the two sides or something. Like there's a lot of fun ways that you can finish the, the projects. And I think that, uh, you know, just depending on what uh, your style is, how much you want to uh, put into some of the finishing details, depending on what you're doing with the projects, if you're using it for yourself or giving it as a gift, there's just a lot of fun ways to decorate these up too at the end. So there we go. We'll get this added. And then there's like one thing left to do. And I'll show you that at the end. Oh, there's a little closure that we gotta add. So I guess there's two little things, but like they're tiny, teeny tiny. We almost have this done. No, I'm nearing the top of the hour, but we're so close to done on this. Obviously not with all the decorating of it, but like that's the fun part. And I put any of the, the layers that would be difficult to access, those we already decorated. So let's put this in here, line it up to the crease, line it up to the edge of the paper on this side and stick that down. Fabulous. We have one more of these little closures and that one kind of holds your book together a little bit in here. It holds some of your pieces together so that stuff isn't flying out of your pockets. So this one comes inside the front cover let's add that on there and then we have one more little piece you know that six by six square with the four folds on it I'll show you what happens with that one next and then this will be assembled so we got this one that goes into here just inside this front cover and it's kind of to hold this section here back. Then we have this one holding this section back and then we have this pocket and this little pocket. So we have this one little piece. Now we're gonna take a trimmer and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these corners off just like we did with all of the other pocket ones, the mitered corners. Okay, so those are done. And then we're going to go at that same angle here, we're going to cut this diagonal from corner to corner. And here you just line it up in your trimmer, corner to corner, and cut this in half on the diagonal. So now what we've done with that one piece is we've actually created two slash pockets. And we're gonna open this up so that you can see the waterfall section. And when you've got it opened up to that section, we're gonna be adding the slash pocket here, and we're gonna be adding the slash pocket here. 
and you can see there's a little bit of stuff sticking up here so I'll just trim those little sections off. And like this, and like this. So once I stick these down, this whole project will be done. So I'll give you guys a little peek through the project and we will be finished for today. Oh, you know what? I have to cover those. Otherwise, these slash pockets are going to be protecting them. So I'm not going to do that. Let's take a little peek through the book first. Or should I just finish this paper? <laughs> I just love all the animals. I know. I know. Um, I have several friends that raise their their own animals and then they sell them at the auction and they get different ones. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, my parents didn't do that. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't tell us those stories. We understood. Um, we actually had a cow named beef when I was a kid because he was going to be the beef in our freezer. And that was just part of our, um, farm life. Right. Okay, so I've got these two big papers here. I'd like to cover them before I put these little slash pockets on there. So I think that would be really cute to cover them first. So those are going to go here. So should I cover those first? Well, let's have a peek through it first. Let's have a look at how cute this is. So this goes here. This goes here. This is what it looks like when it's all folded and closed. We're going to remember that these are going to go in here. But here is our folder all done. When you open it up, you have this first section with a lovely little pocket to store some stuff in. Then you turn the page and we have a different little pocket that you can also store stuff in. Then when we open up this next section, we have this accordion fold pocket to store all your memorabilia or extra things in. We have this giant pocket for tall pieces. And then inside here we have our waterfall for all of our photos. Look how many options there are for all of this. And then of course, even on things like you're going to cover like these inside flaps and stuff too, to make them extra cute and beautiful. And this allows you to cover that up so that everything stays super cute. Okay. And of course, like these inside ones are where those little slash pockets will go. But that is the project. Okay. So what did you think? Is that simple enough? Was it simple enough? Like these, these looked intimidating at first, but the project was actually super, super simple, right? Easy enough to put everything into the folio and make the folio. And the great news is they have several of these. So if you like this one, maybe you try folio three next time, right? Or folio one, and you can use different styles. They have different um, elements included into them. So Gina says, I'll have to get uh, me that. I can't wait to try it. Good vibes. She's feeling good vibes. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Yeah, love it. Uh, Vicky had said she loves all animals, but not rats and roaches. <laughs> there has to be an exclusion somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so fun. April says, very cute. That's a great kit. Yeah, and, you know, for the money, like, once you have this, nothing stops you from just using these directions, cutting and scoring your own pieces and making more of them. If, if you're like a DIYer, nothing stops you from doing this again. In fact, you could watch the photo play video and just follow the directions on the sizes and you could get most of them there. Or you can just like buy one of these one time and then you have all of your directions, anything that's maybe not listed, like maybe the size of the original folio, you can easily measure and cut for yourself. So I think that, um, I think they're a really fun project and a lot of fun to work with and then a lot of fun to decorate with whatever you're going to put inside. Uh, Vicki says it's really cute. I like that back, back 
po uh, pocket. Yeah, the little accordion pocket for putting your stuff in. Diane says, it looks easy, fun to try. Thanks, Alice. I've seen these before, but have been intimidated because they look harder. I know. When you see that it has 27 steps, you're like, I don't know. That's a lot. But like, honestly, some of the steps were find this paper, score it. <laughs> and it's pre-scored, right? They're pre-scored. That was, that's like a big selling point for me. So it wasn't like you have to figure out where to put them. Daniela says, I found a shop in Germany who carried them. That's awesome. Yay. This is folio number two. So folio number two. And like I said, they're available in black or in white. So you can kind of get a different feel for different types. Um, you know, I would maybe even play with inking and coloring this one if I wanted to get some different effect, if I didn't want it to just be white. There's a lot of fun things that you could try with the paper. It's, it's good quality paper, right? Um, yeah. So thank you so much for joining me for our happy at home session today. I do have a heads up tomorrow. I have conflict. It's the only one all month. I knew about this ahead of time. But tomorrow we are going to be meeting at a different time. So alert, alert. It's going to be at a different time tomorrow. We're going to be meeting for Happy at Home at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time. So please, if you're joining me all the time, mark your calendar. I'm sorry that tomorrow had to be a different time. It's my only um, conflict that I know of for the whole month. And I just chose that this time was still going to be best. So 9 a.m. Pacific. 12 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. It's going to be up and posted. Maybe I'll see if I can't send an email just letting everybody know that tomorrow will be a different time. But thank you so much for joining me. If you like some of the stuff that you do here that I've been doing here, um, you can get these. If you don't have a local store that carries them, then scrapbook.com. This is my affiliate link. Thank you so much if you decide to, <laughs> to use it. I always appreciate that. That little the, the bit that they that they um, hook me up with definitely makes a little bit of a difference for me. You can get in touch with me on Instagram at Alice Bowl. Um, I definitely respond to comments on my YouTube videos. So when you comment, I do get in touch and uh, reach back out to you. And um, you can always find out more um, on the Scrap Happy site. This is my email. I did send my Friday Five email on Friday and shared some fun things. And I'll have more things going out in my Friday Five email um, on this Friday. So hopefully uh, you can get to that, signed up for that. So thank you so much for joining me. And we are going to be back tomorrow. Different time for tomorrow, but then we'll be back to our schedule for the rest of the month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.